Who really controls local elections? Well, stay tuned and we'll tell you about it. Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan and this is We the Govern. So again, as we mentioned earlier, you know, who does control local elections? And to discuss that a little bit more, I think we're going to be going to an interesting place in Washington State. I plan on doing a series of stories like this. Today we're going to be going to Mason County, which is located in the South Puget Sound area. It's not far from where I live. And uh, Mason County is uh, one of the 39 counties in Washington State. It's been a county that ha where Shelton is located. It's kind of been an area where it's been trending over the last few years a little bit more conservative than it has in the past. And it is worth talking about who controls local elections. And in, in Mason County, it's supposed to be the Mason County Auditor. In this case, this guy right here named Patty McGuire. Looks like a Patty McGuire and uh, doesn't act like one, but that's who he is. He's the one who's the county auditor and in theory, he He's the guy in charge. But of course, we're asking this question in the first place. And the reason why we're asking is because there have been some significant questions coming up lately and wondering exactly who does control the elections in Mason County. And it turns out it might be that Patty McGuire is actually taking a lot more direction from Mark Zuckerberg, uh, well known for the founder of Facebook. And of course, that's owned by his new company, Meta, you know, this big billionaire out of state conglomerate. Uh, organization and he has decided to engage in Mason County elections. Facebook, who knew? This billionaire decided that he was going to dump a lot of money and Mason County was one of the places that he put a lot of cash. So Patty McGuire decided to take some money from him and the interesting thing is that Patty specifically spent a lot of time in the 2020 election in particular writing a series of articles for the local paper, never once disclosing the fact that Zuckerberg was actually sticking a bunch of money through his, uh, and it's part of this huge project that Zuckerberg was doing in 2020, to influence local elections and the processes that local elections were actually following. And this came out recently, just in the last month or so, of a variety of stories that made national news about this auditor who was busted, uh, basically for attempting to conceal or, or make it kind of quiet and secret. He couldn't totally conceal it, but he was trying to keep it quiet that Zuckerberg was actually funding a lot of his election efforts in Mason County. And uh, they made a number of different stories uh, about this because uh, Patty McGuire, the local Mason County auditor, made a big point out of doing some strange things in this election cycle. For example, he decided that he was going to prevent people from uh, being in-person election observing, which was very controversial. They did it in a number of places around the state. They were able to do it just fine. Patty McGuire made sure that you could not go and observe uh, the elections in person. And uh, so what they're really talking about, this is a report that was published on those sites and elsewhere, showing how much money, according to Zuckerberg's own federal filings, of his organization here, uh, how much money that they gave is about $32,904 in a small county like Mason County. That's enough to basically change the direction in the local elections and exactly what they're doing there and make a pretty big impact. So Patty McGuire said, thanks, Mark. And of course, Zuckerberg, being the oddball weirdo that he is, basically uh, felt like this is a good way to influence and make a substantial impact all around the country wherever he stuck his money. So um, this is really what these stories were about and where they went. Now, this is hardly a lone story. It's not like Mason County was the only place that Mark Zuckerberg decided to engage his hundreds of millions of dollars in. It turns out that uh, he was pretty engaged all over the place, and it made national news. Um, in some cases, it made national news because it looks like it was probably illegal. And uh, the hundreds of millions of or hundreds of millions of dollars, it's an amazing amount of money that he uh, spent in Michigan and in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Washington State, all over the place. Uh, uh, trying to have a substantial direct influence inside the government. So not just as an outside guy who decided to take his money and spend it as a pack, but to actually take over local government and have a substantial influence over what and how they ran their elections. And uh, this has never been done that I've been able to document ever in American history. This is genuinely a billionaire coming in and directly controlling local elected officials. And uh, not everybody disliked it. I mean, uh, NPR, for example, thought this was the best thing that ever happened because of mostly the obsession with Trump. But um, they liked the fact that billionaires came in and took over these local elections. And it was just, this is an amazing series of stories. Mason County is just part of that. And uh, maybe there should be no surprise 
that uh, judging from some of the blowback that's come around that your local county auditor in Mesa County doesn't really want you to know uh, just how involved Zuckerberg was in those local elections. Now listen, it's easy to make fun of Zuckerberg. It's hardly alone. I mean, anybody who looks up this guy online, you know, for memes about Zuckerberg uh, is going to just see an endless uh, example of these all over the place. He just has kind of a weird, creepy demeanor. And of course, people who have interfaced with Facebook and try to use it, as I have, you know how much they try to censor you or try to prevent you from being able to uh, reach out there and spread the word if you are doing something that Zuckerberg doesn't like. And uh, of course, there's all kinds of memes that are out there, and some of them are funny. I mean, you just see this is just a very small sampling, and I'm not doing the worst of them, of course. But, um, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is kind of, you know, I like this one, right? He looks like he's a guy in a zombie movie. He's been bitten, but he's trying to keep it a secret from everyone. It's just very funny. And, of course, people have been frustrated with the fact that, you know, here this guy is coming out and in a very kind of pernicious way taking over local government directly. So it's not him spending money as a PAC or advertising or promoting things. It's actually going into these local governments and changing exactly how they do things. But this is 2022. It's several years past the 2020 election. All that drama, all that history, all the uh, issues that have come out of that election cycle and the blowback and the, um, the different concerns and attention that people have started to spend, I think, digging into the election process, very important. However, it's important for us also to remember there is an election coming up right now, and there's an election in Mason County as well. So you don't necessarily have to stick with the incumbent. He is being challenged. And the incumbent is a Democrat right now. Patty McGuire is a Democrat, and he is being challenged by a Republican. These are partisan races uh, in the commission uh, counties in Washington State. And uh, so Steve Dunkel, who, uh, full disclosure, I've known Steve as an activist, and as an activist who's concerned about, who's been concerned about transparency in elections for a long time. I will link to both both of their websites down below if you want to uh, find out how both of them are running for office. And uh, Steve is challenging him. So at least the voters in Mason County have a choice. They can stick with Patty McGuire and Zuckerberg, or they can go with somebody else, Steve, Steve, who's also running for this office. So I think it's important just to point that out. Now, this is I'm going to come back to this issue here, too, because I always tell activists. And anybody that's gone to my website and down below, I've linked to it as well, Public Disclosure Commission, pdc.wa.gov. It's one of the most useful resources you can have as an activist to actually find out what's going on in your local election scene. Anybody running for office in Washington state, except for congressmen and federal senators, everyone else, you have that information right there in the PDC. You can find out everything you want to know. For example, go to pdc.wa.gov, look up the Mason County Auditor race, and you can actually see how much money each side has raised and the type of money that they've raised. So you can see the incumbent in this case has raised a lot more money. More importantly, you can actually look very, very closely in these election uh, results or in the uh, Public Disclosure Commission reports, and you can see that, for example, the incumbent, Patty McGuire, the, the guy that took all the Zuckerbucks, um, he, his biggest donor right now is a out-of-state corporation from California giving him $1,000 for his campaign. That's the top donor on the list. Now, that's not Facebook that's come in and taken over, but it's uh, one of his vendors, which is kind of weird because he's the guy that decides to reward that vendor, and it looks like the vendor's kind coming back and uh, rewarding him with campaign cash. At the other, and then a challenge, you know, of course, is Steve Dunkel. And if you look over there, you can see some of his donors uh, who live in the area. So um, regardless of wherever they get their money from and how they spend it, you can find it at the PDC website, pdc.wa.gov. It is linked down below. Please go there if you want to learn more, not just about this race, but about any race where you live in Washington State. Because in the end, we have to be educated about ourselves, about what's going on in our local elections and who's running for office. We don't want people like billionaire Zuckerberg coming in and deciding to take over our local elections department. I think that's pretty bad. Facebook's not going to be buying the election this time. Are they going to be influencing it? Sure, they're going to be putting you in Facebook jail if you say something that uh, Mark Zuckerberg doesn't like, apparently. But at least as much as uh, Facebook might be on the brain and be causing lots of problems out there wherever he seems to go, uh, you don't have to worry about them buying the election this cycle, but they are going to probably be influencing it indirectly with censorship and things like that. So just be aware. And it still does matter if you vote. You have to be engaged in a vote. You aren't, we can't be out there saying there's no point in voting, and we sure as heck don't need to be saying stupid things that have no productive impact on how things are going to happen in our community. We have to be engaged and
and we have to be involved because no matter what, it's important to find out and expose the truth about who's really controlling your local elected officials and then make a decision. Is that how you want to, uh, is that how you want things to go moving forward or do you want some change? And if you have some options on the ballot, and you certainly do in Mason County when it comes to the local auditor's office, it's up to you, the voters, to make that decision and that difference. So elections are coming up, they are gonna matter, and I'm gonna point out that everybody has to be engaged and involved no matter what. Staying home and pretending like you can put your head in the sand and hope it all goes away, or throwing your hands up and saying that you give up just means that you're not important and none of your thoughts matter at all. You have to engage, be involved, vote. That is not too much time to put into the process and uh, educate yourself about who is running for office. Because in the end, no matter what, the future belongs to those who show up.